Welcome back to the Enfield Diaries. So inside the car, if we put it into reverse, it clicks, but then it doesn't actually operate when you push the accelerator. So I have no reverse. If you turn it into forward, you get a much smaller click because only one um, solenoid, I think, is actuating. And then I have a forward gear. So today, we've got to take it down the garage and see if we can fit some new contactors. It's effectively a repeat of the job. So this parcel from Traction Motor Spares arrived, or Traction Power Spares arrived, and rather surprisingly, for a mid-1970s car, I can still buy brand new contact surfaces, points and plates. That's the only bit I can get. But then in theory, these are the only bits that wear out. But they're not cheap at 50 quid a set. So, you know. But even so, it's a massive advantage that we can still get these parts. After the last video, the reverse and the forward, when you looked at the operating mechanisms that you can see here and here, both of these moved. So this one in forward tries to move forward, but doesn't release backwards. This one doesn't then move. But if I turn the reverse one, you can see that the reverse actuates quite nicely, but the forward one doesn't release. This set of contacts here seems to have burnt itself back together, despite the fact I cleaned it. So it does try and release, but it doesn't force its way back. So if I put my screwdriver in here and I force that open, I can then get that to close and open. And you can see now it actuates quite nicely, but it's a little bit sticky. So we need to look and see whether or not this um, contactor is actually too sticky. So it's not releasing when it should. So that should drop back nice and easily. So we need to have a good look at this. We think this contactor is badly burnt, which is why we're going to change it. And as a matter of course, we've decided to change the other four as well. So let's get this thing apart again. You've seen this before. So if you're interested, look at a video on the screen now. As expected, you can see that the contact on this side is already quite heavily pitted and sparked and obviously is the one that is causing the stick. However, we also need to check that the actuation of the actual um, contactor isn't stiff as well. So when I take these off, we'll check that these actually fit properly. Right, so the whole assembly is off and you can see we've got a contact plate that sits on this end of the brass rod along with the spring and the spacer. And then that whole rod goes through the centre of the solenoid and then out the front of the solenoid you then have another spring. You then have the other contact plate which sits on top of that. You then have these little packing fibre washers and then the nut which holds everything on. And then last of all, you have a return spring which sits on the outside edge. 
So we're going to change these elements for the ones that are in our new kits, and then we're going to reassemble. I've got these the wrong way up, so that this notch was at the top, and I thought it ought to be round the right way. I don't know whether you can see, but there's a tiny, tiny little brass washer inside there that you want to make sure doesn't get off center. I've used a screwdriver just to make sure it's on center, but if you rock it around a bit, you'll lose it inside, and I'm not sure that's good. It is interesting that the powered end always seems to have not one, but two springs. So do make sure they're not an oddity, but they are actually two on the powered end. The other contactor seems to be the same. So this contact board sits on that oblong, so it can't rotate. So it is actually then all round the right way. And this has a little pile of um, smaller um, diameter washers on so that the spring is centered and held on. So we're going to tighten that up. I'm using a mole grip at the bottom to hold the thing i'm just going to make sure that's tight that's the main contactor arm with the new contacts at this end and the new contacts at this end this bolt is tightened up until the packers under there just make sure everything is tight there's still a bit of play on the back because the springs allow the contact plates to move slightly so each plate when they spring has got a bit of spring in it but it also moves really easily forward and backwards and everything else seems to be in order we now need to change these contact points out so these should come out because they were uh, cleaned only the other week so we're going to put that one away and we're going to put the new one in there you can see the difference between the brand new one and the uh, charred old one. I'm going to reuse the existing bolts because the bolts they've given me don't seem to be the right ones. So that's in. out as well put the new one in so there's the new contact pins in and then we're going to put that back onto the back end of this particular contactor. Yes, good job I changed it because that needs to line up at the bottom. So that's the one end assembled. And you can see in there that the contacts line up nicely. They appear to be very flat and flush. So hopefully they should work beautifully. Rinse and repeat for this end. And then I'll show you how to get it on there. With the new contact points in the top 
and the new contact plates in there. You need to remember to put the spring. Uh, that's what the little washers are for and that's what that's for on there. And then the top is assembled over the drive pins. So over these two holes and the whole lot is dropped down and should If it lines up properly, it should come through quite nicely. And then these are tightened down. And then these little nuts are just put on to these to hold them steady. And that should be one contactor complete. In rest mode, both solenoids are off. When I turn it to forward, this solenoid, you can just see the contacts here, will snap across and energize this end. If I turn it off, it releases. If I turn it to reverse, this solenoid here will snap and locate and join and that's what makes the circuit before these set of contacts at this end were arced together and wouldn't release they were constantly in forward gear which meant that it would work in forward but then i couldn't work in reverse should now be able to work in reverse fine hopefully with new contacts that's jobs done as always if you like the content do like and subscribe. I'm going to put the seats back on now and take it for a quick run before the light goes. See you next time on the Enfield Diaries.